My name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is on a Hinkle controller configuration miscellaneous settings. We'll step down through each of these individually. FM transmitter. Now, FM transmitter, if you're operating in standalone mode and if you have an FM transmitter, this is where you can configure that. Uh, check that box to turn it on. You can check the FM transmitter frequency here. Make sure that you really find a, a, a non-broadcasting FM station in your area. And in the U.S., that's practically impossible. Um, a lot of these stations appear to broadcast with enough power that they kind of radiate into the sidebands and they get into adjacent channels. And so the best you can hope is find one with a minimal amount of, uh, uh, of noise, let's say, or, or programming on it. Um, you can go to Google. There is, I forget, there is a website that you can put in your zip code and it'll give you all of the active transmitters in the area. Therefore, you can find a frequency that technically is not supposed to be used. Now, for FM transmitters, these go, these are all odd numbers. So 88.2 is not an acceptable FM frequency. So this last number has to be an odd number, 1357 or 9. There's a speaker on the FM transmitter board. If you activate the speaker, uh, you'll be able to hear it. Now, the speaker is not loud. Actually, that speaker is designed to go into a small set of headphones. So it's really designed to go up next to your ear and have a cup around it. It's on that transmitter board so that if you've got the if you've got it in the house where it's fairly quiet and you just want to make sure that you've got audio data, you can turn the speaker on and you can hear that there's actually audio coming out of the transmitter board. This gives you the volume. Don't go overdriving this. Make this somewhere in the area of maybe 15 or 20. If you get into 30, uh, you can actually uh, hear less than if it was lower, and it'll be all scratchy and noisy. The other thing is not so much associated with FM transmitter, but if you have a transmitter FM board, on that board there's an eighth inch audio jack, and if you have a Hinx Pix Pro board, on the right hand side there's also an eighth inch audio jack. That is a line out jack. That is not a speaker driving jack. Do not directly connect that to 8 or 16 or 4 ohm speakers. That's not what it's for. You can connect it to a set of power speakers. Uh, the signal level at that line out jack ranges from 0 to 1 volts. Uh, if you have a set of power desktop speakers, or powered outdoor speakers, you can plug into that and it makes a very nice way of transmitting the audio. Now, FM only works in standalone mode. So if you're driving your controller via E131, the FM transmitter is not going to work. Uh, the controller needs to be operating in standalone mode where it's getting the audio data off the SD card, only then can it transmit that audio data out the transmitter. So that kind of completes the FM. Talk about operating mode. Operating mode. Your controller works in two modes. One mode it is listening for E131, ARTNET, or DDP message packets, and it is displaying pixel intensities based on the data within those packets. The other mode is standalone mode, 
in standalone mode, all lighting data is coming from the SD card. This is where you pick the operating mode. Currently, we're in acquired data off of Ethernet, which means I'm going to be listening. I'm, meaning the controller, is going to be listening for E131, ARCnet, or DDP packets. Okay? If you are acquiring data from an SD card and acting as a master, the controller will ignore all E131 messages. So if you're developing with x lights and your intention is to put it in SD card mode and you say, oh, okay, let me go ahead and put this on an SD card using Joe Hinkle's HSA program. You put it on an SD card and you listen to it and then you come back and make some changes on x lights and hit output play on x lights. You're not going to see activity on the controller. Why? Because you're in standalone mode. Okay, standalone, you're going to ignore E131. Now, in standalone mode or where you're using an SD card, the controller can be a master or it can be a slave. If all you have is one Hinkle controller in your slow, in your show, it'll always be a master. If you're working in standalone mode and you have more than one Hinkle controller, there can only be one master, but many slaves. The difference between a master and a slave is a slave will still drive and acquire all of its data from the SD card, but it will not initiate play based on schedule information. Actual play starts from the schedule are only activated by the master. Think of it as an orchestra. The master is the maestro. He taps his baton and he says, three, two, one, play. And when he says play, all the instruments in the orchestra play. Well, when the master says three, two, one, play, the master and all of the Hinko controllers as slaves will start playing data off their SD card. They will be within 10 milliseconds in sync with each other doing that. The big thing to remember is when you're in standalone mode, or playing as master or slave, you are no longer listening to E131. And I've identified that down here for you. The next miscellaneous is time zone. If you're standing, if you're, if the controller is operating in standalone mode, then it's important for the controller to know what time it is. Now, if the controller is connected to the internet, which in a previous video I strongly suggested everybody go up to network Wi-Fi and engage their Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi will make sure that you have the latest software. The other thing I didn't mention in the Wi-Fi video was it's also responsible for updating your time. It'll get the current time. Now, your Easy Lights controllers and your Hinkspix controllers have what's called a battery backup real-time clock. That real-time clock will keep time for several weeks uh, if it doesn't go out and get access to the internet and get uh, government time. So uh, what you do here is you look down at your computer, you look at your watch, this thing says, my controller's current time is 8 a.m. If I looked at my computer or my watch and it said it was 9, then I would hit that and make it go up by 1. Make it go up to 9 o'clock. I would then want to save changes if that was the case. So I can either go up or down. The intention is making this time which is the controller time, make sure it matches your computer time or the time on your watch. 
The last one is bypass firmware checks. If you check this, the controller will not attempt to go to my Hinkle's firmware server and look to see what the latest software is and update it. This is mostly used by commercial people that want to lock down a display and if it's working today, let it work for the next 30 days. They don't want any hiccups, nothing whatsoever. This is only good for 30 days. After 30 days, if you want to lock it down again, you have to come in here and reset this. This effectively says, Joe, I do not want to update any of your new firmware changes or new capabilities or bug fixes uh, until this 30 days is gone. So that now completes our Hinko controller configuration training on miscellaneous settings.